So I use yep. every single stage of the project, but there they might be different kinds. Yep, yep, yep. That's that's really one of the key secrets to getting interesting and realistic sculpts. I'm always painting with yep. Whether it be like a study or a scene I'm trying to create from my imagination, I'm always using yep, yep, yep. to some degree. Intriguing, right? You might be curious as to what all these artists use during their creation process to make their art so well. And maybe it's something that you already do, but maybe you're doing it wrong. And we're going to discuss it today. This is something that all pros artists seem to do. And we're going to take especially a look at how they do it compared to us beginners, students, and generally speaking, people who are still learning the craft. <laughs> Now, let's end the mystery. Today's topic is using references. So yes, it might be a bit of a letdown because there's no special trick, but still, it's something that all top artists seem to do, and they do invest a crazy amount of time into it, as they all do it in a certain way that we're going to try to understand today. In this presentation video, Monsieur Christian Bull, who works as a concept artist, director, now wait, director first and then concept artist and creature supervisor shows us his work and how he uses references. We might not instinctively use reference. The majority of us don't and we're very creatively free, but we don't create anything very good. And so then at some point, someone smarter than us comes along and says, now nah, you should use reference and we do. And the quality of our work goes up like 10 times. Something that you can notice is that they're all photograph references of animals and such. When students and beginners have to design a creature for a project or for an assignment, for example, it might be tempting to go look for references in other people's work and pull pictures from our station, for example. But apparently, it's not something that at least Mr. Christian Bull does. So this is the first occurrence. But let's take a look somewhere else with character designer Madame Knight Jang, if I pronounce this correctly, where she shows us how she works and what is behind her, her creative process. As you can doubt, she also talks about using references, or in her case, what she calls research. Research first and foremost is probably one of the most important steps, especially if you're doing a design that is predominantly historical or functional. Research can be a really valid way of pushing you past your boundaries and helping you explore different solutions to complex creative problems. When we take a closer look at what kind of references she uses, we see that there's no other artist's work again. There's no sketch or painting, only picture and photograph references. Sometimes I see students and beginners using manga, anime or video games as reference pictures. But, you know, it's not... you shouldn't do it. If you have a project you have to work on, it's also tempting to pull references from our station because it will be really close to your target product. But you should be aware that it's not something that pro designers seem to do. Now we've been talking in 2D. We've been talking about concept art and illustrations. But let's extend a bit the range of our research and see what happens in 3D and in animation and whatever. If we take a look here at an animator from Riot, I believe, we can see that he's doing his own video references. Not pictures, but video references, as would say Monsieur Ethan Baker. Don't you act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I say it all the time. Don't you dare take photo reference. You take video. You take video reference. The type of reference you will use depends on what you're creating. For example, taking a look at a traditional sculptor who is not here taking references from pictures, but hired live dancers to pose for him. So as you can see, choosing your references and sometimes creating your references is an important topic whenever you start a project and whatever you're working on. And it's normal for professional artists to invest quite a lot of time into it. In each and every case we saw, the amount of pictures or videos were quite extensive and involved photographs or videos that people shot themselves and not anyone else's artwork. In the case of Monsieur Ethan Baker, on his own YouTube channel, he does use sometimes other people's work, but whenever he does, it's strictly for the purpose of studying it. And this is where I think the distinction has to be made. You can study other artists, 
to absorb their style, to learn about their techniques, and to expand your own skill set. But in this case, you should do it separately. And if you want to create something and you have to work on your own project, your reference board shouldn't include anyone else's artwork and have only photographs and such. From there, you can use your own stylization that you studied beforehand. But don't try to do everything at the same time, like studying plus creating. The pool will be a bit too strong for you, probably, as you're still a beginner, and you'll end up copying the artwork without improving that much. Remember, the goal as a beginner, and on this channel anyway, is to improve ourselves. If you get better, your project will get better. But in this case, it's secondary. So now that we've seen all of this, the next steps you can do is to gather references from, for example, museums or photographs, and maybe documentaries, movies, and why not TV shows? Why not? Sometimes TV shows. Not all of them, maybe and sometimes. This way, you will expand bit by bit your visual library and your general knowledge. And this is kinda how you get better at your craft. Yep, yep, yep.